So in the previous video for working with bricks and creating our custom post type alongside custom templates for our archive and for our single post template, following along with a recipe kind of blog website, we're now going to take a look at how we can add filtering in. But I would recommend if you haven't seen the first video to check that out, you can see it here and the link is in the description as well. So this is where we are at the moment. We've got our hero section at the top. We've got our filter section, which is what we're going to create in this video. And then we've got the actual listing itself. Now, this is something we saw in the previous video. So what we've got is we've got three filters in this example, but you can use as many as you want. The principle and the process is pretty much the same as what I'm going to show you today anyway. So first of all, let's take a quick look. We've got our recipe type. Now this is a custom taxonomy associated with our custom post type for our recipes. You can see we've got some things that are highlighted, some things that are kind of ghosted out. Anything that's ghosted out basically means there are no recipes associated with that category yet. Then we've got calories per serving and we've got cooking time. Now this first one is a custom taxonomy associated with our custom post type. And the second two for our calories and cooking time are custom meta fields using ACF associated with each of our recipes. And if we scroll down, you can see there's the additional information, things like the cooking time, calories, and so on. So if we use these options, let's say we want desserts, you can see that now filters things out. We may say we want to be really cautious with the amount of calories we're taking in. So let's say we want to reduce this down and have lower calorie options. You can see that now filters it down to this one, which is calories, which is lower than the other recipe. We may also say we don't have long. So we may say we've already got about 10 to 15 minutes. Well, we can reduce this down and you can see that now reduces our cooking time and so on. So it's very simple. It's very easy to work with. Very intuitive to use, but there's one thing I do want to draw your attention to. At this point in time, the filters and searching are still a beta feature inside Bricks itself. So I wouldn't generally recommend that you use these in a live production website, but hopefully it won't be too long before these actually make it out of beta and they become a full release feature. Anyway, let's see how we can recreate all of this. So if we jump into the dashboard of our website, we're going to come into Bricks and inside there, we're going to open up the template that we previously created for our archive. So there's our recipe archive template. Let's edit this with Bricks. So the first thing we're going to need to do is insert our container that's going to hold our filters. So let's add the section with the container. We'll reposition this where we need this, which is in between the hero section and the actual listing itself. Okay, so now we've got that in place we can start to build things out. Now we'll apply some styling and some classes and things to this. When we get the basics in place, we come back and make everything look better. Okay, so let's select our container. And what we want, we want three different sections inside here for the three different filters we're going to use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add three blocks inside our container. So these are gonna hold the filters and the title for the filter in place. So what we're gonna do is we'll select our container, we'll hop over, we'll set this to be horizontal, and we'll also, well, we'll leave all the gaps and stuff. We'll set all that up with global classes and stuff a little later. So if you're not used to working in that way, stick with me because I'm gonna show you how you can set up all your styling to make it easily scalable and have full control over the styling and everything. Okay, so with that being said, let's choose our first block. And from there, we're gonna come over to the plus and we're gonna do a search for filter and we find nothing. That's because, like I said, this is a beta feature. So what we need to do is enable this to be able to work with it. So let's save our work right now. Let's jump back out to our dashboard, come into Bricks, and we're gonna come into the settings section. Now, if you scroll down, you can see we've got query filters. Enable it, and you can see this is now ready to save. And now if we go back into our template and open it back up, we'll now have those options for filters. Okay, so let's select our first block. Let's come back over to our elements and search for filter. And you can see there's our seven filters. So the first one we're gonna add in is a select that allows us to choose the category or the type of recipe, like, like desserts and so on. So we'll select that, choose to select our filter. And the first thing we're gonna do is to say we wanna target query. So you have to have at least one query enabled on your site. So if we select this, you can see there's our query, which is card. And if we open up our recipe selection, you can see there's card, which is our loop. You can see the little loop symbol for the query loop there. So we know we're targeting that. So obviously if you have multiple different queries on your page, it would make sense to make sure that you name them accordingly. So if you had one for recipe, one for favorites and so on, you may want to name those 
the relevant things, and then you'll know exactly what you're targeting from this target query dropdown. We've only got one, so we're going to choose the card option, and that will then open up some additional options. So apply on, we can choose to have input or submit. So if you wanted to, you could have the ability to select multiple different filters and then hit a submit button to be able to have all those go at the same time. Or you can use the input option, which will kind of use Ajax to, as you choose a particular filter, it will update the listing accordingly in real time. Then we've got the action, do we want to filter or sort? In this example, we want to filter. Then we're going to say we want to select the source. Then we've got a taxonomy, a WordPress field, or a custom field. We know that this is a custom taxonomy, so we're going to choose the taxonomy option. Then we'll choose select, and if we take a look inside here, you can see there's our recipe types, which is our custom taxonomy we created in the previous video. We'll select that from our list, and now you can see it says all recipe types, and we've got a couple more options that we can choose from. Do you want to hide any empty values? If you've got things like I showed you which were ghosted out, you could, instead of having those ghosted, you may want to just hide them. So if you've got a long list of taxonomies and not everything has something in it, well, it probably makes sense to hide it. We'll leave it as uh, the hide empty as it is right now. You can have hide count if you want to, which is just count the number of recipes. And if you've got a hierarchical setup, you can choose that option and we'll show it in the same hierarchy inside this dropdown. We're not using any of those, so we'll leave all those as they are for now. You can then choose a placeholder, so you can type something in, or you can use a dynamic value. So you could, if you wanted to, have something set up in such a way that you use options pages as part of Advanced Custom Fields Pro, and you could then have all these placeholders be in dynamic data pulled from there. Probably a, something a little bit more complex you want to cover, but you do have that option if you want a le level of customization that doesn't require coming back in here. So what we'll do is we'll just pop in. So we say choose a recipe type, and you can see that now fills that out inside the drop down. Okay, that's basically all we need to do. We'll say update filter index, where it'll go off and update and make sure that everything is up to date with the content that's included, and we're all up to date. You won't see anything on here, but you can see now we've got this main meal, and you can see we've got the options showing up inside here as well. Okay, so there's the first one. Relatively easy to do. Let's expand this out again. Let's choose our second div block. This time we're going to add in another filter. This time we're going to say we want to have a filter range. Ranges are great when you have things like, in this case, numeric values for things like the cooking time and all those kinds of things and calories and so on. You can target that information really easily. And it will pre-fill out the start and the end values based upon the minimum and maximum available, which is pretty cool. Okay, so we've got that inserted. Let's select it. Come over to our target query. Again, we're going to choose card because that's the same information. Input is fine. Source is going to be custom field. Post type is post or field type is post. And then we need the meta key. So let's go and jump over into ACF and see our meta keys and what value we want to grab. So there's all of our recipe extra fields. These are our custom meta fields. So we want to deal with, in this example, we'll do the calories first. So we want the calories per serving. So all we need to do is click to copy that value. Go back into our template, drop in that meta key. You see that now pre-fills out the values. Come down to our mode. We're going to choose the option for slider. You can use input if you wanted to. I just don't think that's the nicest way of working. So we'll say we'll choose the slider. And we've now got our first slider in place for our calories. We're going to repeat this one more time. So we'll choose our next option, our next block. Come to our elements. Search for filter. We're going to use range again. We'll select it, target query, card, input, source is custom field, post is post, and then we want the meta field. So we're going to use this for the yield, so we'll put in the field for that. Set our mode to slider. We'll save this, and we'll just click update filter index. So there we go. We've now got everything set up ready. Obviously, it doesn't make a lot of sense. You've just got these numbers and sliders that mean nothing to nobody. So let's address that. We'll apply some styling, put some headings inside here, and make everything look a lot better. Then we'll test everything out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come to our container. We're going to rename this. We'll call this filter wrapper. We're going to give this a class. So we're going to do filter dash wrapper. There we go. So now we can apply a little bit of styling to this. So the first thing we want to do is come over to our styles, our layout. We're going to just connect all our sides. And we're just going to simply add some spacing in. We'll do something like medium. Yeah, medium looks pretty good. 
Okay, so next up, what we're going to do is we're going to apply a little bit of a background color. So we'll choose this light color. We'll lighten it a little bit more. We'll come to our border. We'll apply a border to this. So we'll link all our sides, set our color. So we're going to just use this lightish blue. And we're going to give it a rounded corner so it ties in with the rest of our design. So we'll set a radius of medium. Okay, that looks pretty good. Obviously, now we want to make sure that we've got some spacing inside here. So we're going to come back to our content. We're going to align everything to the top, first of all. This means that our headings will line up nicely. And we're going to come into our column gap. And we're going to choose an option from here. So we'll try something like medium. And we're going to set exactly the same for a row gap. Now, even though we're not seeing anything, obviously, when you switch over to mobile, then you can control exactly what spacing you've got inside here as well. OK, so there's the basics of that all set up. Next, we're going to come into our blocks. We got, again, we're going to name these. We'll call it filter block, and we'll do the same for the one below. And the third and final one. Now, this isn't just good housekeeping. It all just, just means that things just a lot easier to see what's going on at a glance, especially if you're working in a team and you hand this off to someone else, they can immediately see what everything relates to. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to give these a class. So we can use BEM naming again. So we're going to do, we've got filter wrapper, then two underscores, so we're going to do BEM naming, and we do filter block. There we go. Now, before we go any further, we're going to choose the second block. We're going to do the same thing again. But we've already created, so we're going to do it once. So filter wrapper, filter block. Same for the third and final one. The beauty of this is now we can target all three of those and we can set up various different options. So next up, let's go and drop in our headings for each of these. So we'll drag our first heading in. We'll change the text on here. So this is going to be recipe type. H3 in this example is going to be fine. What we're going to do now is we're going to apply another class to this. So we've got filter wrapper, underscore, underscore, heading. And there we go. So now we can apply what we want to that. So let's go to our styles. Let's come into our typography. Let's make this smaller. So we'll set this to be small. And what we're also going to do is we're going to come back to our filter block. And from there, we're going to come into our content and we're going to put a row gap in. So again, we're going to use the same kind of option. So we'll do a small row gap. And now you can see our heading is separated from our actual content. So now what we can do is we can duplicate this. We'll drag this down into our filter blocks. And because that's all using the same style, all we need to do is change the content. Save the final one. And there we go. So now what we've done is we've created our filters. We've set up some global classes. We've applied BEM naming to it to make sure that we can make changes very easily. So for example, let's say this heading is a little bit too small. All I need to do is choose one of those headings, make sure we've got that class selected, come into our style, and we can say, let's make this a little bit bigger. Let's set this to be medium. And now you can see all three of those update accordingly. Same thing goes with a filter block. If we come into a filter block, we can make adjustments to that if we want to. Whatever you want to do, it's all very simple. And this is the beauty of, again, working with these global classes and setting things up using simplistic BEM naming. We can easily see what we're doing. We can make global changes in a matter of seconds. It's all super quick and easy. So the final thing I want to do is come into a section, and this gap is just a bit too much at the bottom. So I'm not going to worry about a class on this because it's not really worth worrying about on this one instance. But if you were using this in multiple locations, it would make sense to apply a class to this. Then you can control it wherever you are. So what we'll do is we'll come to our padding for the bottom and we'll set this to be something like extra small because we've got a big gap at the top of this anyway. So we've now set things up. We'll hit save. And let's take a look at this in action. So there we go. We now have everything all set up. So let's try it. So first of all, let's say we want to check out just main meals. There we go. There's our main meals. Let's say we want something with a different yield. So we want for more than just one person. Let's set this to be two. And you can see that filters things down accordingly. So we can see how we can do things like filtering and things like that. But there's also the ability to sort things. So let's take a look at how that works. What we'll do is we'll duplicate this section for yield. And then we're going to change this title. We'll set it to cooking time. And what we're going to do is we'll just get rid of the filter that's in there currently. We'll come over to our elements and search for filter. And we're going to grab a filter for select. 
So we'll choose this option. We're going to come back up to our target query and set that to card like we've done before. The same for input. We're going to change the action from filter to sort. And now you'll see this gives us a different set of options. Now we can create our sorting options and you can stack multiple different sorting options inside here. Let's add a new item. We'll give this a label. We'll say quick recipes. We'll choose a source, which is going to come down to a meta value and we need a meta key. So for this, we're going to use the preparation time. So we'll simply copy that and we'll paste that in the meta key. And for this, we're going to set this to be ascending. So now let's just duplicate this, change the label, change this to be descending. And we'll come to our placeholder and we'll just put in what we want inside here. And we'll just pop in sort by. OK, so now let's save this. And you see there's our new cooking time. At the moment, we've got them. We've got 10 minutes, 25 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. So let's choose the option for quick recipes. And you can see now that sorts them out. So we've got 10 minutes, 15, 20, and 25. You want a slow recipe? You can see that flips it around. And you can still use that in conjunction with these options. So we can say we want slow recipe for desserts. And you can see that sorts it in the relevant order. And if you want to, you can adjust your calories, your yield, whatever you want. You can stack these filters and sorts on top of each other. So with these two videos, you've been able to see how you can elevate your skills from just using standard basic WordPress functions to incorporate in tools like advanced custom fields, creating custom post types, taxonomies, meta fields, create all the templates you need to display them. And now in this video, being able to apply custom filtering all inside Bricks itself without the need for additional plugins over advanced custom fields. Hopefully you found this incredibly useful. And if you want to find out more about working with Bricks, check out this playlist. There's over 50 video tutorials in there showing you all manner of different things you can do with Bricks. As always, all applicable links are down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.